so this is supposed to be a buff, so I don't need any slides. <laughs> uh, uh, we currently have pretty big problems with uh, signaling cloud point comparisons in, in GCC, like we don't uh, we don't implement it at all anywhere, basically, except in the backend. Uh, and uh, nothing is expressed uh, correctly before the backend. Uh, uh, so something needs to be done about this. Uh, uh, to be standard compliant, the front end has to say uh, which operations are signaling and which are not. Okay, does everyone know what the sig signaling floating point is? Uh, if, you have, uh, if you do a floating point comparison, uh, you get one of uh, four results, smaller than, greater than, equal, or unordered. Uh, and a signaling floating point comparison, uh, it traps if the result is un unordered. So if you get none, if you compare none with anything, uh, then you get a trap. And that's, uh, uh, that's what uh, languages like C uh, say you should do for, for all, all inequality uh, comparisons, but it works. Uh, and there are, uh, uh, there are like intrinsic functions to do non-signaling versions of that. And there are also intrinsic to do signaling versions of equality. So, uh, 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 in, in Gimple, uh, this, this isn't really uh, uh, express, expressed nicely. Uh, it cannot be optimized nicely. In RTL, it isn't uh, implemented at all. Uh, uh, there, there are no operators for it or anything. Uh, uh, you, you should just assume that uh, uh, any smaller than smaller or equal, greater than, greater or equal, or less than, greater than, nowadays, since a month and a half or something, uh, uh, are signaling. And everything else is not signaling it. Uh, uh, so, so we end up with the back end actually implementing the C front end rules. Uh, and all optimizations, uh, in, uh, uh, the, re the representation in between is pretty crazy. You cannot actually do all kinds of combinations of, of, of two separate comparisons. Uh, uh, and uh, because it's not expressed uh, uh, with separate operations in RTL, uh, we have to do uh, special things to, uh, to do it in RTL, like make a parallel with an inspect, which I did, which is not nice, okay? It's not nice, but it works. Um, but that, that doesn't optimize correctly or or as good as you would want to in all, in all cases. Uh, it does in some cases. Uh, CSE actively uh, uh, pulls out the comparison. Uh, uh, so if you do uh, a non-signaling comparison and a signaling comparison, it just, uh, it just does uh, only one comparison, which is fine. Uh, but uh, it, uh, uh, it will not always see uh, uh, which, which one to use. So uh, uh, sometimes this uses the unordered comparison. Uh, 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 that's policy we, we see speak, the non-signaling uh, comparison. Uh, and then it still needs to do a signaling one because it need, needs to trap if the uh, inputs, uh, uh, if you have a non an input. Uh, so, uh, so this doesn't optimize well either. So we need some way to, to express this in RTL. Uh, what, uh, what we could do is uh, set a set a flag on the RTL on the RTL itself, uh, but that doesn't work so very well either, because uh, we actually we actually would have to to check it in quite a few places, and it's hard to find all those places. We can make new codes, so we have uh, compare, but we also have a compare ordered or whatever compared signaling whatever. Uh, but new codes is always also not very nice if we have to uh, put in lots of lots of new codes, right? Like every place that now and now checks for compare for floating point compare anyway uh, would have to check for that as well. Yeah. Oh, I'm I'm, I'm so sorry. Uh, uh, where was I? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. So we, so we have to. Uh, uh, we have to do it in RTL, but uh, uh, before RTL, we also have to do it in Gimbal. 
uh, in trees already actually because it should be uh, it should be emitted from the front end code because the front end code uh, 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 should implement the language specific rules for uh, what operations are signaling and which are not which turns out to be pretty much the same for everything right now but yeah, it's it's not nice to uh, to, to, uh, uh, to just impl implement the C rules for everything, that's not nice. Uh, it's it's going to give problems if any language turns up, but the rules are different. So, <laughs> so what are we going to do? How are we going to implement this? Because I don't know. <laughs> uh, I, I know some ways to do it in RTL, uh, but none of them are nice. Uh, I can make up some ways to do it in Gimbal, but I don't know Gimbal very well. So, uh, uh, trees is easy. Uh, in trees, it's it's quite doable. It's easy to extend trees. And yeah. Don't you have the problem also that Uh, uh, you, uh, you can change which uh, 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 which exceptions actually cause uh, cause a CPU trap. You can you can change which exceptions actually cause a CPU trap, but you uh, uh, but the floating point standard, right? Uh, Seven five four or whatever it's called now, six one six one zero or something. Uh, uh, d uh, they say they say. Uh, uh, well they, well, they completely define how, how it works uh, if you disable some trap. You, mm -hmm. uh, it still sets a, st a status flag. Right. So, uh, so the, the, the machine instructions are, uh, well, at least for PowerPC, and probably for SET as well, and I think for x86, and I looked into MIPS, and it works there as well. Uh, machine instructions are just sent, whether exceptions are enabled or not. So. Well, I mean, PowerPC does have the ordered compare versus the unordered compare, and the ordered yeah, compare does instrument. does raise the signal, and the unordered compare does not. Right, right, but it mm -hmm. sets it sets all the flags uh, the right. same way. But I mean, uh, 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 like if you say with FM, the, mm -hmm. the header file, if you disable some exceptions, you can disable these exceptions. Right, it's not a smart thing to do, but you can disable it. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, uh, but then the machine still sets a status flag. So but, uh, y you need exactly the same machine instruction. Mm -hmm. So that, that's not a problem, I think, I hope. Well, my, my thought was is more the, um, if you have this thing, that, you know, you could say, I want to change the exception model for this if statement part. And then on PowerPC, you might want right. to generate a compare ordered versus a compare right. unordered. Right. Uh, uh, I, uh, I, uh, I, I don't think the middle end. Uh, uh, well, uh, 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 so you want to have some block where the exceptions are enabled, and some block where they're disabled. I don't think the middle end treats that very well. Uh, keeps 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 them enabled on exactly the right places. I don't think so. But. So, so I think that may be a, a misunderstanding. So that's two different things here. What you're talking about is sort of if an IEEE exception happens, how is it signaled? With the FN, you can switch between actually raising a trap versus just setting the flag. But right. that's only if the exception happens, and one of these two things will, will happen. What we're talking about now with the signaling versus non-signaling is whether an exception is signaled at all or none. And, and that's an right. independent story of... And by the way, even the so-called non-signaling, um, the non-signaling um, instructions still can raise an exception if Absolutely. it's a signaling NAN or if there's something else going wrong. Certainly. So either of those instructions can raise an exception, but just under different conditions. And if an exception is raised, then depending on the status flag in the FN, it can then set the flag or it can raise a trap. So those are basically independent orthogonal questions. So, so one of the reasons I wanted this buff is, uh, 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 of course, I know how it works in PowerPC, and on set it turns out to be pretty much the same, right? Uh, uh, but which I do is know because it is IEEE more or less specified. 
No, no, no. Uh, the uh, the way the instructions work is uh, uh, the compare instructions, uh, the floating point comparing instructions uh, return four different flags, all four of them, uh, which which is, which is IEEE, but it doesn't say that you actually have to implement your CPUs that way. And there's lots of CPUs that are not implemented that way, uh, where you uh, 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 where you have to say in the instruction itself which condition you care about, and it only returns that one. Which is, which is very different. Uh, and so some things in uh, different CPOs, uh, different art detectors, uh, work, work, quite different, uh, work quite differently as well. So I wanted to have input on that. Uh, because uh, uh, the problems power has with it are probably quite different than uh, what other art detectors are. So how, how does it work on ARM? Is, does that have, does that have a problem? Yeah? We've got the same basic problems. The, um, the, I mean, the real nightmare is that um, the inverse of GT is UNLE. And, yeah. and the generic rules in the compiler say that if you've got UNLE, you should generate a non-signaling comparison. Whereas if you've got GE, uh -huh. Or whatever the opposite one was, f I've forgotten. Um, it it's a signaling comparison, right. so you can't just flip the conversion. You right. have to preserve which was the original direction that was being done, in uh -huh. order to decide correctly, and that doubles essentially the number of conditional patterns you have to deal with, for no real benefit. Yeah, um, it makes it very complex to get it right. Um, because you can't do the inversions, and particularly, particularly in ARM state where we've got condition execution, we just have no way of being able to represent the fact that these are flipped versions um, right. as well, because that would just make the number of possible patterns ridiculous. Um, right. So really what we need is essentially another set of um, conditions so that we can decide from looking at them whether this is a trapped or an untrapped version. Right, right. Um, we only need it for the four inequalities, basically. For the what? The four inequalities. Oh, yeah, sure. GT, uh, LE. Five. Uh, actually, five. Five. It's uh, LT, GT, LE, GE, and LT, GT. Uh, since, yes, since but since LT, LT, I think LT, GT is, it's, always, it's trapping is always trapping. Uh, is, we don't have an untrapped version of that, so because you probably because you can't actually express it in C directly. Uh, um, you, are, you would have to do uh, some sort of functions for that are intrinsics, yeah. Um, yeah. But it's not in standard C. It is in such. standard C. Oh, of course, the, yes, you're right. Yes, they are now. Yeah. Um, but obviously, we've sort of read read roughshod over that a bit in the back end because not many. Not many yeah. people really care about the precise trapping. Right, right. Uh, a lot of people do not care about uh, signaling NANDs at all. Yeah. Right? That's, um, uh, and non-signaling, uh, no one cares either. <laughs> well, technically, signaling NANDs aren't in IEEE. They're an extension in x86, PowerPC, ARM, and so forth. Uh, they're kind of defined. I think signaling NANDs are there, but I don't think we're talking really about signaling NANDs. We're talking about um, the more quiet NANDs when they get oh, yeah, involved yeah. In, in the results. Because signaling right. NANDs signal, end of. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, what I meant is uh, uh, lots of backends do not uh, implement everything signaling NANDs correctly, and the middle end doesn't implement well, everything uh, signaling NANDs And that's NANDs partly correctly. because, A, the documentation on this is very poor. Um, a lot of the ports that most people derive their ports from have got it wrong. Yeah. I know the ARM port is, is not right. Right, um, right. But no one cares, so we uh, keep it. And nobody's there. really filed bug reports on it. Um, yeah. So it's not. It's never been a priority to go fix it. Well, if there's a bug report open, that's a priority. You don't want open bug reports. Well, exactly. Right. But I haven't seen, I don't think I've ever seen a bug report on ARM saying that you're, you're signaling on IEEE if arithmetic is wrong. So <laughs> <laughs> if, you raise a, if you raise a phantom one, I'll ignore it. <laughs> you won't get away with it that easily. But. 
and it's it's not just the back end it's also the middle end that doesn't uh, that cannot optimize things the way you want to because of uh, the way it's represented like like you said uh, 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 in order to talk right to them which is non signaling I hope uh, but but you uh, you could combine that with a uh, greater than which is signaling. You can combine those, so it's just a, a, a signaling uh, uh, in order to greater than. You can combine it to one comparison, and it would be nice if the middle end already could do that, because uh, 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 when it enters RTL, otherwise when it's expanded to RTL, uh, uh, you get advance in there. And that's not uh, yeah. The problem the problem is well comes because we can't flip branches properly because we haven't described patterns in the back end to allow you to do that properly. And and uh. really, we should be able to define reversible comparison operator as true for everything by adding the right codes to make that always true. At present, that you can't do that because reversible co comparison operator is is the decider as to whether or not you can sweep this and, and still generate the same comparison. Right, right. Uh, uh, another thing that came up recently, it's not directly related to anything, and we can probably solve it, but uh, it's a uh, uh, floating point class classification macros, like uh, is finite, that kind of macros. Uh, uh, they currently in, in trunk, uh, use floating point comparisons to decide this, uh, and uh, also our pets, patches uh, uh, two years ago or something I don't know uh, to to do it uh, with integer comparisons instead, uh, uh, which works works better for ARM, right? It's written by uh, Tamar, so, uh, uh, but like on PowerPC and on set again. Uh, we actually have machine instructions to do classification, so it would be nice if you can uh, 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 exp express the classification thing uh, in RTL with some free code as well, whatever. Uh, so we can just optimize, or, uh, or, or it could be done just in expand, I guess. I but suspect that's more about keeping the abstraction right until you get to the expand phase. Sorry? So I think that's more about keeping the abstraction right until you get yeah. to expand. Yeah. After you got through expand, you can make that choice. You know, do I do it through inter integer sure, code sure. or yes. do yeah. I do it through yeah. target operations? Yes, but uh, the optimization currently is done. Uh, I don't know if it's done on trees already. I think it is done on trees already. So, uh, uh, so, it, so it's transformed into a floating point comparison, or it's going, going to be an integer comparison, whatever. But that's done really early. While the actual decision should be in the back end for this. What is best for the back end to do this? Uh, if, even if the decision only would be like uh, do this on floating point or do this as integer, uh, that's very machine specific already. And not, not even with architecture, but with machine even. So. It may not even be simple architecture because it may depend on which um, ISA extensions you have yeah, in that architecture. Yeah. It's, uh, so it's probably uh, not even a hard and fast choice. Right, yeah. And then you have the optimizations I added a few years ago for glibc where it, when it's doing these things, glibc puts it into a union, takes it out and does an AND and all that kind of stuff. And we put in code that recognize that and right. turned it into the machine instructions or, to, or just yeah. didn't do, move it from the floating point unit to the energy unit and back. Yeah, but that's just crazy. Right, but the, if, we had had, if we had a real built-in that could tell these things, yes, yes, glibc nice could be modified to use that, and then we can write the appropriate code for power, they can write the appropriate code for ARM and, and so forth. Right. Doesn't have to be the Richard and Michael show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, so, so I have no solutions or anything. I don't have a presentation. I, I have no solutions. I have nothing to present. I wanted uh, uh, to talk to talk with people 
about this problem, um, how other people think it should be solved, and what the situation is like on other architectures. Yeah. I mean, one of the questions in the back of my mind is, is who cares? And I'm sh there's some, there's, you know, let's say 10% of the floating point people in the world care. Yeah. 20% well, well, don't, don't, don't they, they want the program to run as fast as possible and always use fast math. And the other 60% don't know one way or the other. Yeah, I'm, I'm pulling numbers out of here, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 it should matter for, for uh, most normal users, actually. Uh, the reason uh, 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 inequalities uh, trap by default if they get enough is uh, because that is, that is what, what works best for most users. So people should care. Uh, like, like on PowerPC, we always uh, generate non-trapping currently. Uh, so people who accidentally or, or on purpose uh, put in a non into some calculation, it will just keep chucking on, right? So, uh, while it should trap, actually, if it's completely standard compliant, whatever. I'm just curious if anybody here can talk to the inhibitors on the middle end side of things in the Gimpel. Uh, my sense would be that uh, to do this right would be to inhibit a lot of optimization, potentially. And uh, But I'm not familiar enough with this to know whether that's true. Uh, does anybody yeah. here have some thoughts about that? Or do we have the right audience for that? I don't know. Uh. We might be a little constrained by not having I know on the uh, 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 when I change it uh, uh, for PowerPC when I implement the backend thing, PowerPC, uh, uh, which which inhibits uh, some RTL optimizations, uh, uh, some compares cannot be fused together again uh, anymore. Uh, uh, that wasn't measure wasn't a measurable difference. It uh, uh, well it shows up in test cases of course. But, yeah. So it could be a perception problem. In, in yeah. the, if people yeah. are, you know, worried about that in the middle end, it may just be a perception problem, not but, a uh, true problem. Uh, uh, it's not. It's not implemented because no one cares, right? That's what I hear. But I think it's more, more true that uh, uh, no one cares because they cannot get it. We don't implement it, so yeah. So has there been discussion on the list about this? I, I know you've had some discussions. Uh, a little bit, a little bit. Got some great input, but yeah. I don't, uh, I don't have a pet to, to put forward the pets that I want to have or anything, because I don't know how to do this. I don't know what would be a good solution for everyone. So I've been involved <coughs> for the past few months on, this, on the LLVM side, the whole issue of floating point exceptions and how to handle all that stuff. <coughs> and there the situation is even more, uh, let's say even worse than in GCC, because so far LLVM assumes basically throughout the middle end that floating point exceptions just never trap. <coughs> Do not trap. Do not trap, n never, ever. Uh, that's their problem. Yeah, uh, but, but while it's true, because by default and Linux, floating point exceptions do never trap. You have to switch uh, it on. Well, if you ignore signaling NANDs, yeah. No, even signaling NANDs don't signaling trap. Signaling NANDs always trap. No. That's what signaling NANDs are, right? No, uh, they they will always yeah. raise the exception, oh, the but it just sure, sets sure, the flag. Sure, 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 sure. So so LLVM yeah. assumes that you're n y you never raise an actual hardware exception. You only set the bits, and LLVM also assumes that nobody ever looks at these bits, so their contents are ignored. That's the fundamental yeah. assumptions that LLVM handles for f in general for floating point. GCC is a little bit better because it does ex assume at least you have the F signaling, uh -huh. F trapping math or whatever. Yeah. So it, it assumes it can trap. So you, if you do switch it on, then at least you won't get like floating point exceptions pulled out of an if or whatever and get get spurious traps. So uh, the, the reason why I'm bringing it up is we are now trying to fix that in LVM because we actually have a one <laughs> specific user who is asking for that in ISV who wants to switch these on. So I'm wondering 
and, and, and of course, as long as you don't even switch the, that, that on, or if you don't even look at the exception bits in the first place, then all this distinction between signaling and non-signaling comparisons is, of course, a uh, no-op anyway. Yeah. So I, I guess the first question is, do we have anybody here in the room who has an application, who knows of somebody who has an application that are actually interested in doing this kind of thing, switching floating point exceptions on, trying to get precise traps, caring about this stuff. Because, as I said, we, we know of one case so far. Well, uh, I uh, 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 order comparisons, uh, uh, signaling comparisons, whatever. Uh, uh, what I mostly protect against is uh, if you put in wrong data, if you input wrong <laughs> data to the algorithm, and then it traps. That's what programmers want to see, right? They don't want some wrong output, which is sometimes pretty hard to detect in floating point even that it is wrong. Well, that's the claim, but the fact is that right now most programs never turn on traps and never look at the exception bits. So it's the question of whether sure? programmers can. Yes. Wow. Most, I mean, otherwise. I, I think it's just on uh, by default on Bowbusy. So no. I could be wrong. It is, it is on by default. Yeah, I thought so. No, 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 no. GCC has the F trapping math on by default. But F trapping math only says we generate code under the assumption yeah. that it may trap. So if you then do switch it on, yeah. it's just, it's just the code is correct. But you do have to make the F set and call to switch it on. And I don't believe much, there's a lot of code outside of the actual Trapping math is just a sub flag of fast math. Yeah. On that note, I mean, the, the current, you know, common HPC application is the vectorized MLDL kind of stuff where mm -hmm. they obviously do not want it to trap, they want to get an answer. They don't care that yeah. much. So if they're using this one of the small 16-bit floating point formats for that, uh, they don't want that and, you, and when you have vectorized versions of these things then exact traps become more difficult to, to worry uh, about all anyway. Of, all our vector instructions also have an order version. The signaling version. Yeah, so they do. Only but have a but then again, you, you know, to get a, to get exact trap information out of a vectorized instruction about which one of these things did trap and so forth is not always easy well, to get. That's so something for the signal handle, so. handler to figure out, right? So I suspect that precise trapping is more of a debugging technique than it is a true use case. Most users are going uh, to look to most... Yeah. I, and, and I'm not an expert in this field, but I, my feeling is that most people want to run an algorithm, check right. at the end of that algorithm, did an exception re uh, arise it's, somewhere it's, during that, and then take some defensive action. Right. Usually that will be there was an overflow in it, and therefore I it's, need to go and rerun it with a slow very, path. It's or, very comparable to uh, integer division by zero. It's, it doesn't doesn't trap on some architectures, and uh, uh, we actually get book reports about it on PowerPC. Yeah. So I mentioned that I know of one use case, and that one use case, what they want to do is they say, we understand sort of how the floating point stuff works, and we write our algorithms so that if we do everything correct, there will never be a NAN anywhere. Because yeah. we write our algorithm that way, right. and we do our checks and whatever by hand, and we know there should never be any NAN anywhere. And so right. they want to switch on the, the trapping exceptions, because they say if there is any NAN anywhere, it means we made a program mistake, and we basically want to see the exception and treat that as an assertion failure. We did a bug somewhere. So that's why they want right. to switch it on. That's that's also what signaling nuns are about, from a different direction. Like, uh, if you ever, yeah, if you ever calculate anything with a signaling nan, then you're done. Yeah. So, so the consensus is that this doesn't matter at all anyway. Uh,
That's true, yes, yeah. So, I mean, what would be the suggestion for sort of middle and infrastructure to improve on that? I mean, I guess, as you said earlier, it would mean we would have to ha get extra comparison codes or... Yeah, I, th I, th I think that's pretty much I what needs to be yeah, done, I yeah. Yeah. So what, what I'm still a little bit confused is sort of for the unordered ones. So does it make sense to have an unordered unordered no. signaling? No, uh, uh, no, we can get rid of the unordered all of them if you have signaling. Why? Yeah. How? Because basically uh, uh, the unordered are the non-signaling versions. So if you express that differently, then we don't need them anymore. Well, but I mean, what if we want to check is this a NAN? I mean, there's the with the there's the built-ins, see the C built-ins where you can say if it's un, it, you can say if is ordered or whatever or is unordered. Mm -hmm. So there, I mean, you that shouldn't signal in any in either way, but it should return your comparison right, result. So you just do, uh, well, well, of course you use the the built-in is is none, right? But uh, uh, which you can do with floating point comparisons or with integer comparisons or, or with direct instructions. Well, uh, 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 what, uh, what I'm saying is right now we have uh, 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 things like greater than, right? And we have u greater than. Uh, you don't need the u one anymore if you express that differently because you can make everything signal. Yeah. So uh, well, well, I say that's that's a target problem anyway. It needs to be. Uh, 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 it needs to say is ordered until it goes uh, full expand, and then the target can decide what to do. Uh, so, two things. Um, to his point, it seems like most of the use cases for this are basically debugging or checking whatever the trap exceptions would be. And to his second point is probably at the GIMP layer, the problem you're going to run into is like, oh, this seems to depend on a lot of the hardware, right? So if even if you create cogen or extra parameters in GIMP, how are you going to pass that back to the back end to use the correct instructions for trapping? At least that would be my question, right? Because all the hardwares do it differently. So if you add these yeah. cogens at the beginning, how are you going to get that so that you get the correct trapping for whatever architecture? Like, I don't know how, like, I don't know if anybody here works on GIMP. I'm not an expert on it, but that would just be something we may want to consider, right? Uh, uh, actually, selecting the correct instruction would be easier the more information we have from GIMP. So, so if we have a gimple for an unordered comparison and a gimple for an unordered comparison, and we yeah. go through expand, then we just know. Well, that's. I mean, that's the easier. Because right now we don't have that in the operator, and the target has to sort of guess. Well, it's probably the C rules, and therefore. No, I, sorry, um, but yeah, if that's the case, then. Um, then yeah, I don't see any reason why not to have these ECHR operators at the GIMP layer, and then just bring them down to RTL or whatever. It just makes a lot of sense to do it that way, unless anybody has any objections or anything that they think in, should be added the, at that in layer. The, in the GIMP la layer currently, if uh, two different comparisons are, are combined, okay. it cannot express it properly. So you keep a OR, right? So it's it stays two comparisons. Yeah. And then in the RTL, it stays two comparisons. And then in the actual generated machine code, you have two comparisons. Well, one, one will do. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm like. Uh, oh, uh, like to his point, we could try to make it one rather than two, but I don't know what would be the easiest way to do that, right? I, I don't understand the question. So, like, he's saying that there's it's a combination of two instructions at the RTL and GIMP layer. Like, it's a set of two, if I'm understanding correctly, right? Or it's something like that, right? Can we uh, just make it so that it's one operator and just pass it directly to the instruction rather than doing this weird uh, with, hack? Uh, with the uh, 
uh, signaling comparison. Yeah. Uh, uh, if you have like free signaling comparisons, uh, you, uh, uh, it's not uh, that isn't required to keep free. Okay. Uh, if it stay free, you can just make it one. Okay, so it's, that's not a problem. That's explicitly allowed in all Okay, standards. so then that's not a problem. Uh -huh. that's, that's not a problem. No, I think the problem is... Yeah, the problem... Go ahead. Uh, I was going to say it's probably the same thing. The problem is when you've got one that's signaling and one the, that's the not signaling. The real problem is that the in, yeah, the, you write your C code and you write A less than B. And actually, when you want to generate that into machine code, because of the way you expand C into machine code, actually you, you emit the inverse of that. So you end up branching on not A less than B, which of course is not UN uh, uh, GE. It's not A less than B. Um, uh, and but if you switch it, then the rules are sort of you change which comparison you do because one of them is a, an exception raising comparison, the other is a non accepting yeah. comparison. Um, and that's where the problem is. You could probably deal with that not through Gimple if you wanted to preserve that property with fewer Gimple codes. Um, but it becomes a real problem in the machine backend because now you've got standard branches and then you have branches that you have to write backwards in order to know that you've, you've got the right comparison codes. Yeah. And a point before about Gimple is we do need the classification instructions as Gimple things and you don't want to have the RTLs generate the, you know, there's no way to generate is ordered, is unordered, other than doing a comparison against the NAN right now. It, it currently is uh, optimized to flood point comparisons somewhere in the Right, right, but you, do, you, you want to keep it in Gimple and keep it in RTL at expand yeah, time yeah. and then have the back end be able to generate something different. Right, and that's not going to be really hard. I, I thought now. GCC had a it's ordered now because it's part of the one of these C intrinsic yeah. extensions. It has, yeah. I think, ordered and unordered, but it doesn't have all the FT classification. True, yes, it, it, it certainly has ordered because that's one yeah. of the ones that was added to C. It has like but I mean, to some extent, we should should separate out what C can do right. and what the compiler needs to be able to do generically. Right. And what the compiler right. needs to do is is at least as much as C, but it may go further than that because IEEE potentially goes further than that. Any more remarks, questions? Nope. So just to add for the energy comparisons, the reason we did it so early in the other patches was because you want to see, see all the way, away all the mass that you have to create to extract the bits and the exponents and the significance. So if you did it late, then you have a great probability that you have a lot of these masks in your, in your code. Yeah. Particularly if you do comparisons in loops, it won't realize that it's loop invariant and pull it out and see it with, with other things. So doing it at expand time for integer code is a lot more efficient. Yeah, but, but doing it uh, very early uh, doesn't work because uh, uh, it doesn't work in the way that uh, 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 we want we want it to be pretty machine uh, machine dependent because it's uh, how to do it properly is different from every machine. Yeah, so that's I believe what we did was implement a target callback saying okay prefer integer expansion early on. Right, right. But uh, uh, on power we actually on on power nine and up actually. Uh, we do not want want to do it as flow to point comparisons. We do not want to do it as integer comparisons. Yeah. We want to do it in a machine specific way. It's just an instruction that does it. So. Yep, fair enough. <laughs> so, so do you see problems with keeping it uh, uh, as some internal function thingy? Intrinsic, whatever. So, like I said, so the problem is that if you do that, 
then the time you will actually emit the the mask is mm -hmm. quite late and so the the at least back then the problem we have is that you have multiple of these move instructions because sometimes these masks at least for on um, our is for didn't fit in the in the instruction right so you end up with a lot of duplicate moves right so what in what part is that is this created in in expand right yeah and then it, and then it's not CSE or anything yeah so there were some cases that they weren't CSEs. Oh. for instance if you have a comparisons outside of a loop and one inside of a loop if you expanded it before it was if you, if you before if you do it before expand it was CSE mm -hmm. you have to expand you still have to move it's a deep big problem always right ordering <laughs> Not machine independent at all. That's well, it. That yeah, there are some people who claim it is machine independent. Oh, I, I, the way it's written, it's not machine specific. But what it actually means is always machine specific exactly. because yeah. your program is. <laughs> but it's not by this kind of machine. Yeah. Yeah. Case. But that's probably a good thing. So that was it, I think. Or oh, yeah. does anyone have anything to add? Yeah. So if I understand the use case correctly, it's basically mostly for debugging. So is there any idea to integrate some of the information into like debug symbols for GDB or whatever for trapping these floating point? Like that's another, if that's the real edge case is debugging. We may want to figure out if we can integrate some of this debugs into debug symbols or whatever else. I don't know if anybody, maybe that's just me. If I don't think it will be a hard thing to integrate, I'm just saying. I'm just saying that, like, do we need extra debug symbols there, or is it just standard, just for my curiosity's sake? If you set it to trap and you run it on GDB, then GDB will intercept the signal oh. like it intercepts all signals, and then it just will point to uh, we are at this instruction which came from this source line, and then you can see what's going on. <coughs> so you know, that should all just work. So my motivation for doing this is uh, because we have a bug report open for it since 10 years or something, so to implement this. Uh, uh, and all the language standards say that we should do things this way, and GCC does things that way. Uh, that's so I'm really not happy about that. But if no use actual user actually cares, then no. Oh, thanks, thanks everyone for coming here. Yeah. Uh, help, helping me make my mind up anyway. So I do not know what the next action will be. I will uh, probably think more about it. And I'll, I will write patches probably. So <laughs> it will probably not be accepted, but that's not a problem. Because that only makes you write better patches, more patches. Thanks, everyone.